And I'm Stab from Blue Juice. And you're watching Moshcam. I'm going to say Splendor the third time, because that was just... Splendor the third. It was really good. And even though some major technical issues occurred during mm. the gig, it didn't stop us from being gods. <laughs> yep. It felt like, God, like we were wearing large Yeti costumes. We were like Scandinavian gods. <laughs> yeah. They were very broad-shouldered. Yeah. And that, it's good to feel like a swimmer. And also, it just was, it just was. It yeah. just undeniably, everyone, even our label who basically hates us was like, that was really good. <laughs> we're impressed. Uh, a gig in Doyleson, where oh, was there was nuts. a full-on all-in brawl post-show. Like a brawl doesn't quite describe what was going on. Imagine, you know when you see massive men in like the Central Coast or, or anywhere, in calendar or, or anywhere in Australia, and they and you think, what would it be like if those men really fought? Like yeah. if they didn't just fight and then stop because they were scared they were going to kill you, but if they really fought and used all their power. Think MMA, but no cage and no gloves and no rules. And that's basically, and weapons, that's what was sort of happening behind the show, but at the same time the show was going on, so we were a bit like, do 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 like, ah. After the show it got way worse, like they just... The girlfriends were scared to leave the backstage area, as I remember. Yeah, and it was... one guy I met after the show was heavily concussed and had lost five teeth. And he was enormous as well, like he was bigger than anyone you've ever seen to fight, and he was the guy that had gotten beaten up by the other guy who was even bigger than him. He was like all bleeding and just cut all over him and no shirt on. And I called intense. him days later to see how he was and he didn't remember actually coming to the show. The crazy show for me was the show that then resulted in Broken Leg being written, which was um, at the Slip In oh, in Brisbane, and yeah. quite a, a small venue that's used to having <clears> punk <throat> bands, um, and they hadn't cleaned up the stage at all after whatever the last gig was and there was still broken glass all over the stage. And there's a lot of the time in this show where we end up on like our hands and knees or like a go down to the ground or whatever. And um, a lot of time going down for the... Yeah, go, taking well, it to the ground. On my hands and knees and taking just it going to the ground. down. The I would do that time. in order to... I would do virtually anything in order to make the show just, go well. But, um, uh, but yeah. That's true though. So he's laughing because I will. I'm going to suck this guy off now <laughs> if it's going to... That'll be impressive, There's no right? depth to which we will not stoop in order to make the show work for the dumbest member of the audience. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I got all this glass in my hand and like, because they hadn't cleaned up any of the glass and every time I went down, so like my hands were all bleeding and then I was like wiping my face and cutting my face and stuff. And then after the, and then we just got so shirtlessly drunk. <laughs> like yeah. it was an awful night of drinking. And that's the night that Martin Novosel broke my leg by putting on Warren G's Regulate and then just jumping as hard as he could on me <laughs> without even telling me that he was behind me. Martin so, Novosel being PhDJ. From Purple Sneakers. Nobody believed me that I had a broken leg so that I had to walk around for a while on it and go and get a cab right, and so. stuff like that. And they were like, we're going to the casino, woo! And I was like, cool, I think I'm going to faint. And then I got in a cab, went home, then had to let myself into the hotel with a massive dude who needed my help to get into the hotel. And then once I'd gotten him in, I went to bed. Then they called because they couldn't get in because they were too drunk and had lost the key. So I had to walk back out, like blacking out along the way <laughs> along the corridor to like let them in. They all came in. Then I had to share a bit with three people, one of those being the man who had recently broken my leg. And he said, don't worry, let's spoon it out. It's you now. Yeah, it's, it's me now. I'm, I'm left, I'm the last man standing there. No, Jamie's there. He's Jamie's there single. Quiet. Jamie's the sniper. Jamie's our bass player. He'll, he'll pop an E and not tell anyone. <laughs> Alex Gooden. Alex Gooden will, will go pop six E's and tell yeah, everyone. Our, our new keyboard player will do what you expect a new member of the band to do, which is yeah. try hard. <laughs> um, but uh, but Jake will have the most stories at the end of the night. Yeah which at six in the morning at Lobby Call, oh, he'll be telling those stories. I remember one time, this is awful, but I, and this is not actually that crazy, is but it's like- fucking the tranny or? No, it's a different story. Okay. <laughs> um, I remember one time when, I, that's really thrown me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time when we went to uh, that beach town that Loon Lake are from, what's that song? I mean, what's that town? Tukli, no, it's not Tukli. It's like in Victoria, <laughs> it's really famous. To, um, oh, Frankston. <laughs> no, not Frankston, not Punchy. <laughs> Torquay, thank you. Uh, and, um, and there's a hotel there that you play and you stay at the hotel. It's just around the back. 
And anyway, we played, we played there that night and then a girl came up and said, hey, you want to come over to my house and have a drink and whatever. She was Russian. Russian. Yeah, she was. Finally, what a sexy. She said, yeah, anyway, so I was like, yeah, cool. You are so sexy. But after that, can you please stop it? It's fucking, I would go home with a Russian, right? <laughs> so anyway, she said come over. I was just wearing jeans that were all like ripped. I didn't notice, but they had ripped during the show from like here to the, around the back of my ass. But I had underpants on, so it was okay. Anyway, and I had no shoes, no wallet, no phone, nothing. And I was drunk though, so it was okay. And she was like, come over to my house. So. I went over with her and her friends to her house, which was about a 20 minute walk through the dark. I have no idea where we were by the end of it. We stayed at her house, but when I got in there, there were bunk beds and it was her parents' house, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit train spotting at this point. So I was kind of like, oh, oh, I'll just finger you then. Um, <laughs> you feel what a good, strong hands. <laughs> Anyways, and she had said, I'll give you a lift home. So I was like, cool, that's fine. I don't need to know where I am. <clears throat> when I got up in the bunk beds, I realized that A, this was her parents' house. B, she was asleep and wasn't getting up. And C, she was like, I'm not gonna drive. I was like, please, I need to get back to the thing because we're leaving at nine or whatever. She was like, I'm sorry, I can't drive and my parents won't let me have the car if I, even if I wanted to. And I was like, hmm. So I had to basically run out of the house like just with my jeans on and no shirt. I had no idea where we were. <laughs> And people were like up and definitely doing things. And I'm like running basically naked with a huge hole in my crotch. Like I need to fall on open so you could see my leg. It's like obviously I have a hole in my pants. Just running naked with no phone and stuff. Like pretending I'm jogging. Like I was doing the best that I could to make it look like I just decided to go <laughs> for a jog in my jeans. Yeah. And then I eventually got back to sort of what looked like a breakfast area because there was a cafe. There was an old dude with his dog and I was like, man, please, can you just tell me where the, I need to know where the Duke Lee Hotel is. And he was like, it's just over there. And then up that street, he it's could like, tell that something was I up. I was like, I'm so desperate to get rid of you. It's definitely No, there. no, he was like, oh, I feel for you. I know, oh. what, I know what happened here. Because oh, I was clearly still drunk and just like scared. Anyway, so he sent me and I went there. And as I was running along the highway, I saw Jerry and James driving off in the van. And then I got back and realized that actually it was just Jerry and James going to play golf really early. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was still there playing Call of Duty. Broken hand during the show here. Supporting Tricky. Tricky. Midway through the show, it was a terrible gig, as sometimes they are. and. And everybody hated us, and I was like, fuck, I better get myself back into this gig somehow. So I thought if I punch the stage. Oh, angry and punch the stage. No, I just thought if I hurt myself, it'll wake me up and I'll think about the show again. So I punched the stage and then this knuckle totally just cracked off and like slipped underneath my hand. So my, this finger was like here, just <laughs> hanging. Gross. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and then, but we still had four songs to go, so we just, I just had to put it in my back pocket and kind of do 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 and still sing. And after the show. I clearly going green and sweating really hard. After and the not show, dancing was anymore. Like, that was so fucking shit. Man, I think I've broken my hand. And then his sister was backstage and was like, I think we should go to the hospital. And I thought, you should definitely go to the hospital because you've broken your hand. You should also go because you're going to be a massive downer after that show. <laughs> I signed a man's balls in Port Macquarie. He, um, he squelched them and made them taut. But it still required a great deal of <laughs> just S, S, <laughs> S, Grinding S, it in there. T, 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 T. Oh, my balls. A this is more painful than the tattoo. Me. Oh. Kiss. There was a show at Lismore where one girl was getting fingered by like three people. Oh, she, You remember that? Awful. That was an awful, awful gig. Lismore was like rough as fuck basically like one of the roughest shows I've ever played and there was she was like making out with one dude here and then she hated him for some reason two seconds afterwards and like clawed his face until he was like bleeding because he was being mildly ab abusive as well and then three songs later she was down the front pretty much getting double teamed by like another two guys and then one song after this that this doesn't normally happen she was like, oh whatever she was on um, someone's shoulders going woo and I was like whoa fuck Lismore you're messed up yeah. just Australia in general like really it, it can't be overstated yeah yeah Launceston it can't be overstated how messed up Australia is to tour like it's like touring in the north of England. It just, you don't understand what anybody's saying and they're all lunatics. 
But they're nice people. They're very hospitable and oh, decent they're lovely. people. Yeah. You'd marry them all. No, you wouldn't. Um, a guy in Brisbane thought it was awesome to let off a fire was a extinguisher. Girl. Was a girl. Okay, girl, guy, a human, let off a fire extinguisher. A powder fire extinguisher. And so we thought it was like, we couldn't tell what it was, but it looked like a big curtain of smoke. Like, I thought, I was like, Pyro, woo, who's got the smoke machine out in the crowd? Yeah. And then it just kept coming towards the front of the stage, and then it was like a full on just blanket of toxic, toxic smoke. <laughs> Yeah. Choking through the song. And we're like vomiting during Broken Leg and then everyone in the crowd, they just killed it and then we... No, we didn't get to Broken Leg. It was oh, during was work. It, it was oh, like five right, songs yeah. out from the end. That's right. Show our, our um, front of house and tour manager who was like spewing up his food was like, show's off, show's off. And then everyone was vomiting into our rider backstage and like throwing a watery vomit in their face trying to clean their <laughs> eyes out. <laughs> it was messed up. That was an early sh early days kind of show and we were doing a tsunami benefit here and I had gotten this police shirt from a friend of ours and then people was like, man, you shouldn't wear that. You're gonna get arrested. Like, that's not a good idea to wear that, you know, in public. I was like, ah, oh, it's fine. I'm doing the gig, whatever. We went backstage, got a bit drunk and then we went to go on and um, I got up and there were these two guys in the front row and there's always like two guys in the front row just hating it. They're right there. They're right up in your grill. <laughs> just right, but just like, that's him, the whole gig. <laughs> you're like, why are you right there then? Like, go away somewhere else if this is annoying for you. The Mambo should have been a giveaway though. Yeah, they were wearing like Mambo and Oakley and stuff. And I was like, why are these two Bogans hating me so much? And then, uh, and then two songs later, I like look to the right and they're like standing to the right of the stage. But just like this, now they're like, just like giving me the greasiest looks and shit. And, um, and then I go, I'm just like, oh, whatever, keep going. And then I, feel him grab my wrist and like take the mic off me and I re and he showed me his badge and I realised that they were police, you know, and and they took like I tried to pick up the mic and go, Where the fucking doors? But they wouldn't <laughs> let me do it. They just grabbed me and put me in a you know, full Nelson and then walked me out well not that violently, but just walked me off stage. And um, they and Jerry was just like <laughs> We still just kept going. <laughs> and just had to play through. And then I and they dragged me down here and put yeah. me in the office and was like what the hell do you think you're doing? You are taking the deaths of every police officer in the line of duty in vain. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not what I'm doing. Like, just doing this funk hip hop show. <laughs> and just wearing a shirt. And some pink flares. <laughs> and some terrible, uh, terrible clothes. Terrible pants. And, uh, and yeah, and then we went to court about it. The stab had to go through the, I could hear him just doing the whole set upstairs. And I was like, oh, thing was, I went straight off stage and said, play this song that was an instrumental song and thought, oh, what other songs haven't we done and what can I Smart thinking. just do in the meantime? I can't say that I didn't take ecstasy earlier in the day. <laughs> was That's another not bad, true, Mum. That was another bad moment as well. And yeah, and meanwhile I'm downstairs like, sort of like trying not to get yelled at too hard and stuff and like getting my thumbprint taken and shit and like standing against the thing. Just like, can't believe this is happening. And it's on the web, so if you YouTube Blue Juice Arrest, you can watch that.